everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video, we're gonna be making some ATCs or artist trading cards, and I've already cut them down to size, which is two and a half inches by three and a half inches. I'm gonna be creating a distress oxide background, and I'm gonna be using these gorgeous autumn leaf stamp set from Rubber Dance for the focal images on my ATCs. If you've not come across an ATC before, uh, it's short for artist trading card, and they're used as like creating little mini works of art and then you can trade them with people or swap them with people. Um, but I like making them just because it gives me a chance to play with my supplies, play around with my products, see what kind of little effects I can create. And then these can be used as ideas when you then want to do some card making. So that's kind of how I like to use um, my ATCs as a bit of a bit of a reference guide. I like to work in threes because um, I just think they look cute when they're together. Um, I, you can also use them as gifts within cards. Um, yeah, there's lots of different ways you could use them. But the only rule that kind of goes with them is that they are three and a half by two and a half um, inches. So all I'm doing to create the backgrounds is using the smooshing technique. So I've added some distress oxides to my non-stick mat, and then I've kind of dipped the cards in and out checked that I'm happy with the kind of colour combinations and then drying them off with my heat tool. Once they're completely dry, I'm then going to do the smooshing technique again. So I cleaned off my mat and then I'm just adding some more distress oxides. I'm going to add a little bit of purple in the mix this time as well, just to kind of add to the autumn colours that I'm choosing to use today. So once they're all dry, I'm then going to bring in my glass mat and I'm going to add a little bit of stenciling and stamping to the ATCs. I'm just bringing out my waffle flower grip mat and I'm just going to attach that to the glass mat and then I can attach all of the ATCs on it and use the stencil over it. So the grip mat is great for just holding your stencil in place while you're doing stenciling or ink blending um, and I'm really enjoying using it. I think it makes it a lot easier. I've just come in with some vintage photo distress oxide and then once I've added a little bit of stenciling to the left side of each card, I spritz it with water and then I just wipe off my grip mat with water as well. I've got the mix of sentiment stamp set and I'm going to add a little bit of stamping in the background also using the vintage photo. This just adds an extra little bit of interest to the ATCs and I like to add text in the background. I think it's really effective. So my focal elements are going to be these autumn leaves stamps from Rubber Dance. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I've got a piece of white cardstock and a piece of craft cardstock because at this stage, I'm not really sure which one's going to look more effective and work well with the backgrounds that I've created. So we're going to stamp on both and then just see which one looks better at the end. So I'm going to be using gilding flakes today. So I've brought in this peach piece of foam and I'm just adding some flitter glue to it. And then I'm just going to rub that all in with a palette knife. This is a new foam square. So I am adding quite a little bit of the flitter glue. And then once that's all kind of loaded up or inked up, I'm then just going to um, use it on the stamp like you would do with an ink pad. But you just have to be really quick. When the stamp gets contact with the paper, give it a quick press and then remove it. You don't want it all to stick to the card and rip it. Another thing that you want to be mindful of when you use it, any kind of tacky glue with your stamps is that you don't want it to dry on your stamps. So what I'm doing off camera, uh, it's just out of shot, is I'm just spritzing it with water and putting the stamp to one side and then I'll be able to wash those once I've finished. So once they're all stamped, I've got these gorgeous autumn leaves um, gilding flakes from Indigo Blue. It's the tiniest little bit that I've got left. Uh, sadly, this um, colorway has been discontinued. Um, but they do have a great variety of other flakes available on their website. So I'd highly recommend checking them out. Um, their flakes are by far the best quality of flakes that I've ever used. They're not as static as other flakes. So if you've perhaps had difficulties using gilding flakes in the past, I would recommend giving the indigo blue flakes a go and just seeing how you get on with them. Because the flakes are larger, um, I mean, obviously I'm at the dregs of my pot now, but the flakes are a lot larger when they come. So yeah, they're just... Um, really really beautiful so once I've covered them all over the panels as you've seen I've rubbed it over with my fingers I've then just gone over them with the scoochie foam to bring out the detail and then I'm just wiping them off with a very slightly damp piece of kitchen towel just to get any of the dust that's left on the panels 
And here you can see what the leaves look like when they're finished. They're really, really pretty. But I really just feel like they didn't stand out enough on the craft cardstock. So I decided in today's video, I'm going to use the ones that I've stamped on the white. And so I'm just fussy cutting them out with my cutter bee scissors, just so that I've got all the leaves um, cut out and ready to go. So once they're all cut out, I'm going to just add a little bit more stamp into the ATCs before I stick anything down. So I've got the Mix It Up stamp set from Rubberdance and I'm just inking up this stitch stamp with some VersaVine Claire Acorn ink. So this is a brown ink rather than black. And again, I just think it blends in nicely with the backgrounds that I've created. It's not as harsh as black and it keeps with that autumnal kind of feel. I'm also going to use uh, this little number stamp and I'm just going to add a little bit more stamp in just with my fingers there with a the stamp. I'm not looking for a crisp impression. I'm just looking to add a little bit more background interest. Once I'm done with all the stamping, I decide to just add some splatters. I've got this colour pop in white from Pearly Winks. This is just a white acrylic spray paint and I'm just using... Um, the sprayer end, I decide that's just not working. So um, I'll go ahead and use my paintbrush just to add a few splatters. Once I've added the splatters, I can pop the ATCs to side just to dry. And while they're drying, we can just add some frame pads to the back of the leaves, uh, just so that they can be popped up on the front of the cards when they're dry. So once I've removed all the release paper from the back, I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue just so that the foam pads stick really well. These foam pads are not particularly sticky, so uh, I just added the glue for a little bit of extra strength. And then I'm using the Mixer, Mixer Sentiment stamp set from Rubber Dance. Again, I'm stamping this in the Acorn VersaVine Claire ink. And I love these stamps because basically you just create your own sentiments. So I'm going to bring in my mini Tim Holtz trimmer and just show you how you can trim each line down into strips. And then when you know what words you want to use, you can just cut a word out from the strip. Um, so you create a sentiment on a card or a journal page uh, or in our case, the ATCs today. So once I've then um, picked out three of the words that I want to use for my sentiments, I'm just trimming them um, out of the strips with my scissors and popping them to one side. Now I don't want my sentiments to stay white, so I'm going to add some Vintage Photo Distress Oxide just over the top of the sentiments, just to add a little bit of um, extra interest and so they blend in nicely with the ATCs. I just go round the edges with the Vintage Photo as well, uh, just to kind of frame them. I spritz them with water again for added interest. And then once they've dried, I'm just going to add a little bit of foam tape to the back of each of those sentiments. And again, I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue just to stick those down. So once all the sentiments are stuck down onto the ATCs, to just kind of finish them off, the first thing that I'm going to do is just round the corners. So I've got my corner rounder here. Now, I should have done this before I stuck the sentiments on because the corners where the sentiments are, I'm not able to round the corner in my corner punch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two of the ATCs back to back so that one of the curved corners is against one of the ones that I can't curve. And then I'm just going to go around the edges with my scissors. So that's just something to bear in mind before you kind of add any dimension with frame tape. So once all the corners are rounded, I'm just going to go around the edges of all my ATCs with the Acorn VersaFine Claire ink. And then that's my ATCs finished for today. So as always, I'll add some close-up photos at the end. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. A little bit different to card making, but I hope it's given you some inspiration. And of course, all of these techniques can be used with your card making as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.